Hello, my name is Mike Rayner, and this video is about how to install Ubuntu Server 14.04 long-term support into VirtualBox. The outcomes for this video would be to download Ubuntu Server 14.04, configure VirtualBox for Ubuntu Server 14.04, essentially create a guest server, install the Ubuntu Server 14.04, with Secure Shells, update the Ubuntu server, and then verify the SSH by logging in from another computer on the same local area network. Requirements, VirtualBox installed on a 64-bit host computer, internet connection, enough memory to run both Ubuntu server plus the host operating system. In this case, it would be 512 megabytes my bare uh, minimum recommendation for Ubuntu server. And then finally, another computer on the same LAN to verify that the SSH connection works to the Ubuntu server. Additional info, it's what's new, and download the Ubuntu server. At Download Ubuntu Server, they give you a 64-bit edition of Ubuntu server, and you may find it a little bit difficult to find other versions of Ubuntu Server, but that's at releases.ubuntu.com slash 14.04, or Trusty Tar Releases. And then there's an Ubuntu Server Guide. And a disclaimer, while I've researched this material, I can't fully verify that it will work with all combinations of hardware and software. So I've included a disclaimer. If you wish, you can stop the video and read the disclaimer. To download uh, Ubuntu 14.04 server, it's real easy to find a 64-bit version. Simply go to ubuntu.com download server. However, Ubuntu has produced a nice service product brochure that states that Ubuntu runs on all key hardware architectures, x86, x86-64, ARM version 7, ARM64, and Power. But you have to hunt around the website to find the releases for all of these 14.04 server editions. In this case, I've found a lot of them here on page releases, ubuntu.com 14.04. And here's where you can actually download your 32-bit server install. Right here where it says PC Intel x86 server install image. But if you want to use this image, you should make sure that PAE slash NX is checked when you create your virtual guest in VirtualBox Manager. And if you look down the page here, you'll, you'll see that it's got a number of other releases, but I don't see the ARM releases right here, so that's on another page. Go back to that first page and download the 64-bit version, because that's really the one I'm interested in. Click Download takes you to another page and then in a second or two up will pop Ubuntu 14.04 server AMD 64.iso and I'm going to save the file and what I do is I save it to a certain place on my hard drive and this is downloads Ubuntu Ubuntu 14.04 server so I can find it. You'll notice here I have an i386 32-bit version downloaded but not a 64-bit. So I'm going to just click save and up here it says it's downloading and 14 minutes I've got about 14 minutes at this speed now 13 minutes I'll come back when it's fully downloaded about seven seconds left one second download is complete next section will deal with creating a virtual guest in the Oracle VM virtual box manager you're going to have to create a new Ubuntu server 14.04 guest configure it. So simply click on New and come up with a name. In this case I'm just going to call it SRV Serve Ubuntu 01 Linux and Ubuntu 64-bit. You'll notice that there is also an Ubuntu 32-bit and you will need a 64-bit host machine to create a 64-bit server so if you only have a 32-bit host machine 
you're going to have to go back and download the 32-bit server. Sorry, I should have mentioned that before. Click Next. And 512 megabytes is good enough for a basic server. And then you can modify it later. And I'll show you some modifications you can do to it near the end of the video. Click Next. And create a virtual hard drive. Now it says 8 gigabytes, but I'm going to modify that here in a second to go up to 20 gigabytes and you can pick your own size and I'm just going to take the default VirtualBox disk image and dynamically allocate that means that the hard drive grows as you add more files to it click next and here it says 8 gigabytes so this hard drive will grow up to 20 gigabytes and no larger and then click create so now, here I've created, it's put it down here in one of my uh, permanent windows, permanent guests, but I'm going to drag it down here to the bottom here, outside. And there's Serve Ubuntu 01. And some changes I have to make to it. One, in the storage, I've got to select where the ISO file is, and here in controller ID empty I'm going to actually choose a CD DVD file and right here it is where I've downloaded or where you've downloaded Ubuntu 1404 server AMD 64 ISO I'm going to click open and then just simply click OK if you have a 32-bit ISO Ubuntu recommends under processor that you enable PAENX, but since I have a 64-bit, I don't have to do that. So I just cancel that. And one other thing, on the network right here, the default is NAT, but if you're going to connect to other computers on your network, the easiest way to do that is to use a bridge adapter. And since I'm going to install Secure Shell, I'm going to just put bridge adapter here. There are other ways to do it than besides bridge adapter, but this is the easiest way to demonstrate it. And then click OK. So that's pretty much it for creating a guest server. Now to install Ubuntu server, just locate that virtual guest that you've just created, right click on it, and simply start. And ask you to pick a language. In this case, I'm going to pick English. And then you've got a number of choices. Install Ubuntu server, multiple server, check disk for the test memory, boot from first hard disk, or rescue a broken system. I'm going to just basically install Ubuntu server. And then you've got other options here in the bottom, F1, F2. You can go ahead and check those if you wish. But I'm just going to do a basic install hit enter and again it asks the language I'm going to hit enter again once I have the language and then ask for locale I'm going to hit United States and then you've got a keyboard layout selection I normally choose this myself instead of letting it test it out so I do not want it to detect keyboard layout hit no since it's selected and then English US and then English US again and it will be loading additional components after a while it will ask you for a host name for your system in this case, it's all lowercase. It was serve Ubuntu 01. These do not have to match, incidentally. I just keep them in sync, simply keep them straight. Tab and then continue. Full name for the new user, I just use the same name. And tab and continue. And then the username. And actually, you just can hit continue. Ask for a password continue hit enter for continue and then ask that you verify it and then continue encrypt your home directory I normally select no 
checks where I'm located and ask if the time zone is correct. In my case, it's America, New York, and that's correct for me. You'll have to verify your own. I always basically take the default, use entire disk, and set up the logical volume manager. Enter. And select disk to partition. I've only have one disk here, a 20 gigabyte disk created in VirtualBox Manager. And here's a change where you have to go back and you can hit tab and then yes, write the changes to the disk and configure the logical volume manager and then continue, hit enter for continue again. And again, you're going to have to hit tab, write the change to disk and it'll take a while. And I believe the next screen will probably be a task select screen. The next time a decision has to be made, I'll bring the screen back back up. But in the meantime, I'm going to skip a lot of this uh, installing the system. Here, after about eight minutes, I've got it asks for if there's an HTTP proxy. And there isn't one, so I'm just going to click Enter for Continue. Make sure your mouse is still focused in the screen. Here it asks if you want no automatic updates or install security updates automatically. Managed System with Landscape is a security benefit that Canonical will supply you at a cost basis. In my situation, this is a virtual machine that will be used as a test bed. I'm going to install security updates automatically. Now, you've got a choice here of task selection. I'm just going to hit the space bar for Open SSH Server. After everything is installed and updated, you can also go back to task select, and you've got a lot more choices after everything is installed. If you want to go ahead and pick one of these now, go ahead and do it. But I'm just going to pick the Open SSH Server, which allows another computer to connect to this server and hit enter once you've made your selections with the space bar. Finally you'll get to a page where it says installing the grub bootloader and you're going to ask if you want to install to the master boot record or if you created some other place for it. I'm going to click yes and then it says the installation is complete continue. If you use a CD-ROM, go ahead and remove it. In this case, I'm going to just hit continue because I'm using an ISO file. I'll remove the ISO file from the virtual box manager setting. So it's going to reboot. And that's pretty much it for the install process. And here we have the login screen. That's it for an install. Here the server uh, has rebooted, ready to log in. You've done something else while you are waiting for it to reboot. You have to make sure that your uh, mouse is clicked inside the screen so it regains the focus. So I log in, password, and it says 33 packages can be updated and 10 updates are security updates. Just to make sure apt get update. And it will go out and see what kind of updates are available. And once that's done, you do the upgrade, apt get upgrade, and it tells you that you will need 19.5 kilobytes of additional disk space. Type in Y, and it will go ahead and upgrade, update, and upgrade your uh, virtual server. Come back when this is completed. So after about five or six minutes, the system is completely updated. In the next section, what I'm going to do is secure shell 
uh, make a connection to this from another computer and verify that secure shell works. Here I have an Ubuntu desktop, the Ubuntu server just created running side by side in a window. I'm going to take the Ubuntu desktop and SSH over to the Ubuntu server, create a file, and then verify that this has happened. So in order to do this, I need to know the IP address of the Ubuntu server. So I make sure that that's in focus, and I do an IF config. Here it gives me an IP address of 192.168.1.12. So to connect to that, I go over to the desktop, and I do an SSH, and I have the username of the server, although in this case both the username of the desktop and the server are the same, Mike. The one I want to make sure I use is the one of the server, at 192.168.1.12. Hit enter, and the first thing it asks, are you sure you want to connect? And basically what this will do will store a fingerprint of the server connection on your desktop virtual guest or on your desktop machine. The question will only be asked the first time you make the connection. Type in yes and it's permanently added and so now it's asking me for the password of the server. Put that in. So now I'm on the server so let I'll print working directory so it's Mike at server Ubuntu. I'll just use vim test ssh point text. I'm going to create a file here and I'm going to say just simply testing type an i in well you have to use the i to get into the text entering mode and testing SSH connection hit escape colon W quit and now let me go over to the server make sure that's in focus and here I'll just say an LS and so there is test SSH dot text and if I want to just simply open it up. Right there you see what's inside the testing SSH connection. That's what's inside. Or that's the file that was written. If I want to see it in the other way, vim. And there it is. So the SSH connection works. One other thing I want to show you on this video. I want to hit colon Q. I want to type in actually sudo task cell ask for your password here's your selections that you can actually use for the uh, here are all the selections you can use for your server all the additional selections you can use for your server. So you see that it's got the basic Ubuntu server which was done and installed on the open SSH server. So you've got DNS, LAMP, mail, and if you want to add a desktop, here's an Ed. You've been to desktop, Kubuntu, Lubuntu. And I know there's also an X Ubuntu. There's an Ubuntu GNOME, uh, Ubuntu desktop, and there's quite a bit of things that you can do with this whichever way you want to go with your server. And that's it for installing Ubuntu Server 14.04 long-term support release. Thank you.